Hello viewers, good day to you. Welcome back, glad you guys are here. This is a 2007 GMC Sierra, I think it's four wheel drive. It's got the 5.3 liter. That right there is also a 2007, but that's the classic body style. This is the new body style, which is now older because they've made new generations since then. But these were referred to as the new body style, Silverado slash Sierra. Anyway, customer states that when the engine is running that was close. They hear a, uh, a loud, like, rattling, clanking noise uh, from down below. And uh, there's also a check engine light turned on. So we've uh, we drug the scan tool out here with us in the parking lot. Let's plug this thing in, in and fire it up. We'll pull our trouble codes. While that thing's booting up, let's go ahead, restart the engine here. Get that thing plugged in. Beginning engine starting sequence now. Yeah, something down there is making a rattle noise. We do have confirmation of our check engine light, and it looks like our mileage on this particular Sierra is uh, 198,680 miles on the odometer. See that right there? Okay. Scan tool's powered up. Uh, let's hit GMC. Let's see what our codes are. While that thing's booting, I'm gonna go ahead and nudge this thing into the building here. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started and see what uh, what's going on with that noise down below. Automatic ID function beginning. Pull it in, pull it in, pull it in. Another Silverado over there on the rack. Let's see what we get here. I'm probably going to put this up in the air so I can see what's going on with that rattle noise down there. All right, we're in position. Lift arms are centered at the driver. Throw this thing in park. Got an 07 Sierra 5.3, that's an LY5 RPO code. And we're looking for engine and trouble codes. Go to engine real quick like. Uh oh, wife unit's looking like she's packing up. Bye. You out of here for the day? Bye. All right, Have see you later. Day. Have a good afternoon, bye. Bye. All right, codes menu, display codes. Let's see what we've got here to play with. DPCs, whole bunch of stuff here. P300, engine misfire detected. P420, catalyst system efficiency low on bank one. P430, catalyst system low efficiency bank two. P0523, engine oil pressure sensor circuit high. Symptom zero, zero, test failed since DTC clear. P0573, the brake light switch number one has high circuit voltage, okay. All right, so according to these trouble codes, we have an issue with the efficiency readings of the catalytic converters on bank one and on bank two. So what this means is that the O2 sensor that is downstream of the converter, there's a sensor in before the converter and there's a sensor after the converter. The one after the converter is the monitor that, uh, well, it monitors how efficient the converters are. And it appears that both uh, of those downstreams are saying or suggesting that yeah, each converter is not converting efficiently. So let's back out of this menu. We'll head into data and take a look at our downstream O2 sensor voltages. And uh, we'll see what those things are telling us. Let's see, uh, sensor data, there we go. Collecting data, scanning. Okay, HO2 sensor, bank two, sensor one. Uh, no, 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 we're looking for bank one, sensor two, and bank two, sensor two. And we're looking at their voltages. Let's graph this real quick. Let's do a four graph. It's gonna get our upstreams and our downstreams. So we have bank one, sensor one, bank one, sensor two, bank two sensor one and bank two sensor two. So we're only gonna really focus on this graph and this graph right here. Now, what we're noticing is there is almost no switching taking place between those sensors. We can see how the upstreams, those are switching high voltage, low voltage, high voltage, low voltage. We should see a similar pattern on our downstream O2s and we are not. So. I do not think that we've had two simultaneous sensor failures, so I'm not believing that we have, a, we have a biased O2 that is causing that efficiency code. We actually may have a problem with the cat. If it was just a singular, a single 
single words, single or singular P430 or P420 code, uh, we could maybe take a look at the sensors. But seeing as how we have voltage stuck high on both of those, I think we have a converter issue. Okay, let's go down below in a moment and uh, we can check that uh, visually under the car. We might have to pull the converters off to take a look at them, but I think there's an issue with the converter. So now we've got back into engine data. Let us look for the PID for engine oil pressure. If we uh, take a look at our gauge cluster here, we can see that it does have an oil pressure reading. Let's go ahead and shut her down. We'll key it on. We'll make sure this isn't a false reading where it's always saying it's at like 40 PSI. Key on engine off, there is no oil pressure. Restarting. And we bumped up to 40 pounds, okay. We may just simply have an issue with the actual sending unit itself. I believe on this engine it's located behind the intake manifold. So let's see here. Let's find our PID for oil pressure sense, or oil pressure. Na -na -na. Engine oil pressure switch in PSI says we're at 37.138. Let's give it some throttle here. Okay, pressure followed suit. It went up with RPM. So the engine is making adequate oil pressure. The gauge is responding, but we did have a trouble code. So let's real quick, I think I know what it might be. It's actually a fairly common issue. Let's go into, what was I looking for? Let's go back into codes menu real quick. We're gonna, we're gonna utilize the feature of the, I call it, what did everybody else do button. No network available, what? You better log in. Begin connecting now. All right, logging back in, I had to reconnect to the network. So back to where we were with that, uh, what did everybody else do button. They're all gonna say replace the oil pressure sending unit. Uh, that's what I was gonna say. That's what uh, I believe the issue for that circuit high coded code is a circuit high code see there's a there's a circuit high and a circuit low code uh, a circuit high would suggest uh, for example let's say um, I don't know let's say there's a sensor right here in the steering wheel and if that sensor is monitored and I unplug that it's gonna give a circuit high code because there is not any resistance in that circuit to tell the ECM uh, what that particular sensor was doing so it'll say circuit high Inversely, if I were to take those uh, wires of that, uh, that sensor and short them together, it would get a circuit low code because now there's a, an extreme amount of resistance in that circuit because they are shorted together. So it could code as circuit low. So it doesn't mean that it's unplugged or it's shorted. It just means that resistance uh, went super, super low on that particular circuit for whatever that system or code is, and then it triggers the code. So just because you get a code for a component doesn't mean it's actually that component. However, gravity, wrench gravity. However, in this circumstance, considering that uh, I've changed a thousand of these things, I am very confident that it is in fact the oil pressure sender unit. If it were circuit low, I would do a little bit of resistance testing, but since we have a circuit high trouble code, uh, we're gonna end up replacing uh, that sensor in my guesstimation. Or in my opinion, that's what I'm gonna do. That's, that's what I feel like doing here. But that is a fairly straightforward path to repair on, uh, on this situation. Uh, we're not gonna pay attention to the brake switch circuit high voltage just yet. Uh, this takes precedence over that, the engine oil pressure sensor uh, and the catalyst uh, system efficiency takes precedent over that as well. Additionally, we have this P300 misfire right here. That very well could be caused by uh, a clogged converter. So let's say, let's say those units are broken apart inside um, and they're flopping around, uh, it could be the noise that we hear. If there's a restriction uh, in that exhaust due to that broken converter, it can definitely cause misfires. So real quick, let's back out of this and go into our live data function and let's just see if we can monitor current misfires that, uh, that may be present here in this engine. So let's see, we're gonna go, we're looking for data and misfire data this is an older car so it may not be very quick to respond let's see what we get here 
We've got really nothing. Cylinder two, cylinder three. Let's give it some throttle. Cylinder three's got a bunch. Cylinder seven, cylinder six, cylinder one. All right, so all of our cylinders here are giving us uh, some random intermittent misfires. And I also hear that noise down there. So let's go ahead, power this thing down. Get our door open, reaching down to Popsy Hood. And let's take a look at the top of the engine. We'll set the rack, get it up in the air, and then look at that exhaust down below. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good video. Opening Z Hood. Let's get, uh, let's get this hood open right here real quick, like, see what we got going on down below. So we have here a 5.3 liter V8 Chevrolet motor, and our sensor in question is located way back there behind this intake manifold. Now there are some that say that they can reach back in there and just disconnect it and unplug it, get the socket on it and pull the thing out and they leave the intake in position. I don't do it that way. That's not, uh, not my favorite way to do it for a couple reasons. One, a lot of times there is a screen down inside of that uh, oil pressure sender uh, oil supply hole that's inside of the engine block and that screen can become clogged with contaminants and that can cause a restriction to the sensor and you'll end up getting a low oil pressure condition. And you cannot see or extract that screen for cleaning or replacement uh, with the intake in place. And reason number two, that sensing uh, element back there, way down, loud, is actually very, very, very hard to reach. And yeah, you can dig your hand back there and reach in and fight, like fight some things and, and try really hard to get that socket on there. Uh, but you're gonna pull your hand out and it's gonna be cut up and sore or you're gonna fatigue your flanges. And, and potentially cause yourself some injury. So in order to avoid all of that and to do this properly, the intake manifold does in fact have to come off. It's not a huge deal, but the job is what it is. Yes, there is a way to circumvent doing the whole job properly, but uh, I just don't do it that way. I've tried to do those um, by reaching back. It's not very fun uh, and it hurts and I'm not gonna try it again. So that intake is gonna come off. That also gives us an opportunity to change out the gaskets uh, for the intake manifold. So because of that, uh, the way is to do it properly or don't do it at all. So that's what we're looking like if we end up going back there to replace that sending unit. Uh, however, the, uh, the primary complaint on this car was the rattly noise. So let's get this thing up in the air and then we can visually inspect and uh, see if those converters are in fact the cause of uh, those trouble codes and that noise that's down there. Silverado Sierra moving on up on the black subscribe button. Get this thing all the way up in the air and we'll check uh, down below. Oh, you know what? Let's hop back in real quick like and uh, and restart this engine. That way, uh, raw. Climbing up here. That way we can try to listen to that rattle while it's up in the air. Restarting the engine. Yep, I heard a clicky noise down there. All right, climbing back down. Hoorah, there we go. Back up. There we go. Okay, let's take a peek. Take a listen and see what we get. All right, well, I see a valve cover gasket leak. There's the oil running down. I hear a noise. Here in the bell housing. No, it's it's in the converter. Yeah, I, I hear it right over here. Seems to be the loudest. Tell you what, let us grab a, uh, a mallet real quick. Use the big one. We'll give that converter some tap action. See what happens. Oh yeah. Yeah, you hear that? Yeah, these are junk. So it appears that this converter and this converter are one singular piece of pipe that uh, that goes back to this flex pipe right here. So it looks like the replacement on those, uh, those units are gonna be uh, the entire assembly. Um, what I wanna do, let's go ahead and let this thing down, get off our locks, 
We'll set her down. I'm gonna shut the engine off because it's uh, it's come up to operating temp. So we need to cool her down and then uh, let me go and uh, build this work order and I'll see if I can't get this job sold. And then we'll go from there. All righty, folks, we got a green light to proceed. Uh, the parts on this uh, particular truck are scattered to the wind. They, they came from all over uh, Florida. So because of that, I don't know what order they're all going to arrive. So uh, I'm just going to start disassembly and whatever components show up uh, as we proceed is uh, what we're going to install. Uh, but we are going to replace those catalytic converters. That's the big Y-pipe assembly down below. We're going to pull this intake off. We're going to change out that uh, loud noises. We're going to change out that sensor up top. And uh, probably the valve covers too, because we noticed all that oil that was running down that one side. That'll more loud noises. We'll inspect, uh, we'll inspect those valve covers once this intake is off a little bit. And then we can go from there. Uh, the first order of business is going to be getting all these connectors disconnected. Let's pull these guys all out. There's EVAP hoses, there's vacuum lines, there's electrical connectors. There's a fuel line on this side. We're gonna take that alternator connector off just so it doesn't get broken on something. Probably have to pull off this power cable running across right here. And we need to take the wiring harness loose and set that aside as well. Moving on to that wiring harness. I'm up here sitting on top of the radiator support. I'm gonna reach back in there and get that 10 mil off this little plate. Break it loose and spin that one out and then we can take those other two off with the tool. And that's going to separate this harness from the manifold. And then we'll get the fuel lines off and we can get the thing unbolted and removed. You know, I did, uh, I did a similar job on one of these trucks. I'd probably say, uh, maybe about a year ago. I'll see if I cannot find the description to it and put a link for it. But folks went ham on me because they were aware that, that uh, this job could be cheated by uh, just reaching back behind the manifold to get that sensor out. And they accused me of ripping off my customers and charging things unnecessarily and all these horrible things simply because I chose to do it the, uh, the way that the manufacturer says to do it as opposed to cheating. And they said it was unnecessary and I was a horrible person. Um, I disagree with that because I don't think it was unnecessary because that's the procedure. And no matter what you do, you can always follow the procedure. And that's okay. You can, uh, what you can't do is take a huge massive shortcut I can't get this connector off you can't take a huge massive shortcut and then build a full boat because that's moderately unethical I don't know what are, your, what are you guys thoughts on that if you find an easier way to do something and you cheat can you still charge the same uh, same billable hours or do you have to uh, give a discount so basically do I have to charge less for being better at the job or can you still charge the same let me know in the comment section down below. All right, off to our right some. Let's disconnect our vacuum line. Get that thing out of the way. And we also need to pull out, there's a PCV hose that attaches to the right side valve cover. That's this guy right here. Let's pull that guy up. And we broke the plastic or the rubber or whatever. No worries, do that. I'll fix that thing. I have to get a new one. Right here is our fuel line. Let's pull the clip back on that guy. Set that aside. And then we need a tool to uh, disconnect that fuel line. But first, I think we need to lose this EVAP vacuum line right over here. Let me get that guy disconnected. Whoa, I hit you guys with a screwdriver. Sorry. Yesterday I hit you with a flashlight, today's screwdriver. Broke that clip too. This is great, this truck is disintegrating like while we touch it. Yep, wiggle that guy off. That clip is broken, no worries. I can fix that too. Okay. 
Here, let's get these injector connectors unconnected real quick. There's just a couple more of them left. Got to get the ones on the other side as well. Because the injectors are going to stay on the fuel rail and the fuel rail is going to stay on the manifold. These things are full of dirt too. They're not, uh, they're not capitulating. It's a two-stage connector. You got to pull the clip tab thing up. Yeah, you got to pull up this little gray piece here and then press in on it and it's supposed to release. The problem is, is they don't want to press very well. There we go. Got that one. So that's four. Let's get the, uh, the four injectors disconnected on this side over here. Then we'll get that fuel line. I'm doing the fuel line last. Hey, look, it's an engine peanut from some kind of a marsupial. Let's see if it's any good. Or maybe a rodent. Hmm, roasted peanut. Should I eat it? Actually, it looks not bad. If I was starving, I could eat it. I'm not gonna eat that one though. All right, back to business. Let's get these uh, these connectors off and come on. We'll use a tool to help us. Yeah, see that? There. There's one. So much dirt in here. There we go, that one. So that's six of these units. Come on, little clip. There we go. That's seven of them disconnected. And that one out back should be fun. See if we can get to that guy without too much heartache here. Climbing back. Oh, my glasses are falling off my noggin too. Let's get down there and pull this guy up. Come on. See, this is the stuff that the book does not take into account. Book times say I should have had these injectors off already. But when these things get loaded up full of dirt and debris and whatnot, you can't, well, it slows things down. That's what it does, like a lot. Okay, that one's off. So that's all eight injectors disconnected. Uh, I think all we're lacking right now is the bolts and the fuel lines. Back at our fuel line on the driver's side, we've got a fuel line disconnect tool, a little scissor looking guy. This thing is gonna wrap around the fuel line and then it pushes into the connector right there. And as it pushes in, it's gonna release these little clips inside of that connector. And then the connector can slide free from the fuel line. So what I need to do is reach in, pull the fuel line towards us, push the tool away, and then wiggle the fuel line off of the fuel rail. It's so close. And it's not doing it. One more attempt here. I hear the little tabs in there clicking around, but I have not released them. Let's try one more tool. Hey, let's try with this other tool. Uh, it's the same tool, but with a deeper, uh, deeper little uh, uh, business end, rather. Uh, the other one started off the same life, but I had to cut it down once upon a time to fit. So I, uh, now I have two. Try that again, push it in, wiggle it out, and fuel line disconnected. There we go. Deep heating pressure. Continuing to deplete pressure. There, we're good. Okay, there's our fuel line. Tuck that thing aside. Now we're in position to attack the eight millimeter bolts that hold this manifold down uh, to the top of the engine. Alternator cable. 
You know, a lot of times also in the comments, folks will get very mad at me for not, uh, or being dangerous with these cables, because if I were to arc this out on ground, it could cause a uh, battery short. But what folks don't realize is this is a, an edited YouTube video and there's some parts like taking the battery terminal off and disconnecting it that just go omitted. So uh, don't worry, it's okay. We're not gonna hurt anything. See that? Alrighty, now we are in a position to utilize our eight millimeter wobbly bits and get the, uh, the bolts that hold this intake removed. So I believe there's uh, 10 of them, five on each side. Let's get the, let's get those guys disconnected here. Got our first one in the front. I know it's down low and y'all really can't see down there very well. The bolts are sandwiched between the fuel rail right here and the manifold behind it. So we're just gonna kinda have to just reach down this extension. and spin them all out. This is where it gets good because we start to run out of space with the firewall here. So we gotta use the wobble feature. Another one way back there. Reaching back. Okay. Okay, that's everything on the driver's side. Let's scoot on over here to the other side. And we can see all these bolts a little bit more clearly here. Yeah, they're all right here. One, two, three, four, five, all the way back. So let's get these guys all buzzed out of here. And then we should be able to extract this intake. Nada. And one more sneaky hidden boy way in the back. Let's see if I can't yeah, change positions here. Get all the way back in that hole. Get our socket seated. Come on, socket. Yeah, I think that's all of them. Let's back it up and give the uh, front of this intake a tug here and see if she's, uh, oh yeah, she's loose. Super loose, okay. So what we need to do is bring this up, kind of turn it some, and we're gonna come out this way, sneaking past our wiring harness here. She's gonna come out. I think I'm supposed to remove the alternator too to, to sneak this guy out, I think. We're not going to, because I know I don't have to. The, uh, the risk is you gotta watch the connectors on this side, because it is possible to break the connectors for the ignition coils if I try to sneak this out without removing that alternator. But if you just take care and don't yank the thing out, you should be okay. Just every time it meets a snag, you gotta stop and unsnag your snag. There it is. Well, that's nasty in there. Look at that. And here we go. Look what we found back here. We found a shiny newish engine oil pressure sending unit. See that guy? Look at that. But chances are that's a cheapo aftermarket and uh, it's not giving us the uh, proper resistance values. So this thing is going away. Goodbye. Don't need you. Get rid of that. Now, another thing we can see here is there's a whole lot of debris that ended up in this uh, this valley right here. Look at all that stuff sitting down here. So uh, what I'm gonna do is bust out the vacuum and we're gonna blow gun and vacuum out all those intake ports because I know that there is like plastic and dirt and nonsense uh, down in those holes. We need to clean that out. Otherwise we'll blow up another engine. And that's all I need is a pile of blown up engines. I've already got uh, I got three engines here that are blown up. There's uh, one in the Silverado. There's one inside of a Pentastar minivan. And then there's another one 
in that uh, there's a Chrysler PC Cruiser. That one needs a cylinder head. Okay, that's good right there. Return of loud noises, shot back, powering on. Oh, it's a lot of sand. Sand is not okay. This is going to be a multi-stage cleaning process because after we vacuum away the bulk of all the sand, I've got to come in here with a blow gun and then blow out all those holes because there is some dirt and sand in here. Still vacuuming, still cleaning. Suck it all out. Blow gun time, let's finish this off. Okay, over here at the manifold, let's go ahead and get these old gaskets removed and those are horrible, look at that. Yep, let's get rid of these guys, don't need that. And we're gonna blow this thing out with some brake clean uh, and a little spray nozzle as well. Air gun coming in. But what about all the stuff that's inside? Well, we can get rid of that as well. Or also, or two. Watch, all we need to do is open up this throttle valve and we'll insert our air down into the hole, like so. We'll spray it out. Okay, that's good. Now, we need to add some liquid cleaner to the mix. Get that way down nice and deep line. Send it through. shiny yep that's about as good as it's gonna get there we go all right we'll set that thing aside till later actually no we won't because the outside's covered in dirt too We're good. That's clean. Same thing over here on the engine at the port. Blow these out. Okay, so I have here a, uh, a gasket set that's gonna come with our intake manifold gaskets. And here, let's grab one of the old ones and compare real quick. And we can see a huge difference in the wear on this gasket versus uh, the new one. So 
We already have an improvement in sealing capability with the new gaskets. We've also got, ooh, I think those, what are those for? I don't remember what those go to. We'll find out if they go to this engine. We've got some O-rings for injectors. I don't think we're gonna need those. We've got two valve cover gaskets. We will need those. And we also have this plate gasket right here. It is for that valley cover. Uh, now I'm not one to not put in parts uh, if we have them available. So let's go ahead and pull this plate out and throw that new gasket in there as well. All right, so we're looking for a 13 millimeter which I have on the gun, and one, one more connector. Loud. One more connector right here. I believe that's camshaft position sensor. Take that guy, set it aside, then we can come in here, knock out these 13s with a quickness. That one wasn't even tight. Neither was that. What if this thing was leaking? Look at that. These are barely even together. That tells me that that gasket is compressed, like a lot. Yeah, these are all loose. Gravity, that was loose. That was barely not loose. That was loose, okay. I tell you, I'm surprised this thing was holding in oil. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. We'll use a towel to help, or not. So, quick correction. Uh, this is not a camshaft position sensor. That is the connector for the fuel management solenoids down below right here. See these guys? These are the AFM solenoids and that's the connector for it. Error, we have another error. This gasket that came with my kit is not the VLOM gasket. This is for the non-active fuel management intake. So I had to go back and, and order this gasket and I thought about reusing it and I decided against it because this is uh, the solenoid pack for the active fuel management system. And yeah, I can get just a perimeter gasket, but the issue is is the, uh, the passages for the oil to flow through the solenoids uh, also has the same gasket. So I had to, uh, I had to order the whole gasket for it. Uh, it is on the way, so having said that, let's go and disconnect and disassemble this uh, VLOM solenoid pack right here, and then we can change out those gaskets while we're there. Okay, here, let's pull this VLOM apart. We've got a Torx 30 bit. Back these screws out. And we're gonna pull the solenoids off of the, uh, the manifold plate here. That. We need manual leverage to break that loose. Unclick, please. Oh, that was tight. All these are tight. Like a lot. There we go. Oh, another one. Another one bites the dust. I just made that one slip. That wasn't cool. There we go. That one came loose. Let's go back to the gun. Gonna be able to break any of those loose with the gun. They're all coming out with the uh, with the ratchet here. That's how it's got to be. Oh, come on! Don't slip. There we go. A couple more. I think that's the last of them, unless I missed one. I missed this one over here. Let's get that guy loose. Oh, that one, all right. That should be all of the uh, the bomb bolts. Okay, 
are all apart here. Let's get our fasteners out. There's a lot of fasteners in this little unit. I think we have them all. Let's uh, wiggle this guy up. I think I also need some mini pry bar action. Don't break the thing, right? Just don't break it. Incorrect. I need to pull this component off and it looks like down in these holes, there's some Torx bits here. And that's holding on this upper section of this solenoid pack. I need to pull these guys off as well. Put those out. Don't you love how we started to go after this oil pressure sender? And then got completely diverted into doing something else. But it's okay, that's why I buy the master kit when it comes to gaskets, so I can do this kind of thing. So let's pull this business off of here without uh, breaking it. Got a little tab on the end. That is holding me up ever so slightly. Pull that tab back. I think we are disconnected, with the exception of a couple threads. There we go. Okay, this unit is free-ish. Set that aside. Now, let's fry up this next little plate. And that's gonna bring our solenoids and the VLOM gasket with us. You guys see that? Come here, gasket. The new one just showed up, so I already have a, uh, a replacement here. All right, this thing still is not coming apart. And additionally, uh, I was getting really tired of all this oil all over me, so I threw on some gloves. Uh, I think I need to pull these solenoids out in order to get this gasket separated. And that looks to be the case. You see it's got a couple oil seals in there also, and if I'm not mistaken, my uh, my box for the new gasket here also has uh, oil o-rings for the individual solenoids. So it looks like this whole VLOM system, system is going to get itself a rebuild. Let's go ahead and keep popping these solenoids out of those little bores. Get rid of all this business. Yeah, those are out. We have a plate and then that is our old gasket assembly. So we can now toss this thing aside. We're not going to need it. We'll switch it out with our new one. And just to keep things from getting a little dirty, let's set the new one on the box here. Okie doke. So our solenoids have had the uh, rubber gaskets replaced and I break cleaned them off and wiped them down. Let's go ahead and get these things set back up into the bores of our gasket here. Just press them in position, wiggle them in. They're not wanting to wiggle. We need some lubricant. The O-rings are uh, not smashed like the old ones. So let's throw some RT, not RTV, uh, dielectric on here. Get some dielectric on that O-ring to provide some lube. See if these guys are gonna fit. Get in there. Get a twist and a push. There we go. Okay. They're in. That one's in. More lube applied to solenoid number two. Give that thing a push and a wiggle and a turn. Get in there, please. There we go. That one's pressed in. Good. Okay, so I think I have that all figured out. The plates sandwiched together and we've got all the uh, gaskets in place. The solenoids are all now seated with the capturing plates in position. Let's switch out this piece with the manifold piece here. We need to clean this guy off, especially on the ceiling surfaces. Just make sure there's no dirt here. Give that a good little wipe. There we are. Okay, that's good. I don't see any other missing gaskets or parts that I forgot to change out. Plus I don't have any extras. So I think we're on the right path here. 
let's go ahead and get this thing set up in position. I think we've got it correct. We better have it correct or I'll be sad if I got it wrong. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I don't think so, but I feel like it. I guess we'll find out later, won't we? I know why I feel like I'm doing putting this together wrong. Because I took it apart in the wrong order. See, if you recall, I pulled out all these little perimeter bolts for these plates first, and I didn't remove that little uh, electronic communication bridge here between the solenoids. That is why I uh, was confusing myself. Because that's supposed to go on last, and because I took it off, last instead of first like I should have I got myself bass backwards hence uh, the confusion in my head you guys probably weren't confused because it all looked fairly seamless from your end uh, but from my end I uh, I got lost and I was attempting to go back and look at uh, at the footage to see what I had done incorrectly but I, I think I figured it out uh, with the exception of two fasteners that I do not have. There's one. Put that guy in right there. Good. Okay, let's get this plate here screwed down and tight. Let's make sure all these fasteners are threaded and straight, and then we'll hit them with some uh, final torque here. We'll let the quarter inch gun decide just how much torque that's actually going to need. There we go. Everybody's looking good. Yep, time to send it. Missed that one. Very good. A couple more on this other side. Whoa, I could have stabbed my gasket. It's not okay. I think that's everybody. Yep. And we are missing one fastener. Where's that other one at? Found it. I dropped it on the floor. Okay. It's all good. Let us install the connection device to connect all the solenoids to the connector. We basically just need to make sure that all these guys are lined up appropriately with the pins. Slide it in, make the connection, then we'll bolt the thing back down. It's all good, good, good. And we've got four Torx 15s dropping those holes there. These are not gonna get full send treatment with regards to uh, their Torx spec. One, two, three, where'd I miss one? That one? Yeah. There we go. Beautiful. Alrighty, now that I'm done with that side quest that ended up turning into like the, the main feature here, let's flip this guy over and we can get this uh, the sensor uh, out of the body here. Now, I understand this is a new sensor. I understand we had a trouble code. But I also understand, unclick that guy, that this is not a, uh, a GM sensor, so we don't know where it came from. And I know it was working, but our DTCs remained, and my guy wanted to get rid of that, so. We're, uh, we're changing this out with another one. It's just how it is. And deep down in that hole, we're also going to find 
the screen that we talked about earlier. That screen's in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna hang on to it in case my new sensor does not come with one. A lot of times when you order like a, a GM or OE parts and there's two pieces to the service, they'll only sell you one and then they make you buy a second part number for the other one. So just in case my, uh, my GM sensor does not come with the, uh, the appropriate filter, um, I'll just reuse this one. All right, I still do not have my new sensor. And nor do I have the screen, but what I do have is a regasketed VLOM solenoid pack. So let's uh, let's get this thing bolted back uh, in the top of our engine over here. Simple maneuver. Coming in, we'll just bring this guy right straight back. And actually, you know what? Uh, let me talk a little bit about what these solenoids do. See, this engine has a, a feature called AFM. That's active fuel management. And what it is able to do is cancel out four of the eight cylinders. Uh, for example, let's say you're headed down a hill and you're at idle and do not need, uh, don't need V8 power. It can actually send oil pressure through these solenoids, which comes through these ports here. And what that will do is expand uh, one of the lifters or a set of the lifters. So we got a cylinder, 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 and another cylinder. So that's four out of the eight. It'll expand those lifters and hold the valves. I think it's open that it holds the valves, uh, taking away all compression to that cylinder. Simultaneously, uh, it will also turn off uh, the fuel injector for those corresponding cylinders. So it basically turns a V8 engine uh, into a V4 engine uh, when certain criteria are met. It's a fuel saving slash EPA measure. Uh, and as the system progressed over the years and the failure rates climbed, they, uh, they just kept doubling down on that system uh, as if it was gonna eventually work one day. Um, this is an 07 model. Uh, today's 2023 and they're still making this type of system with the prone expandable lifter failure mechanism problem. So after uh, I did, did what, 10, 10, 15, 16 years or whatever under development, um, the system still doesn't work. The irony is, is once it fails, the repair of the system actually will cost more than the total amount of fuel that was saved because that system existed in the first place. But hey, you know, what do I know? I'm not, uh, I'm not bound by the rules and regulations of our bureaucratic bodies uh, that make these kinds of mandates and dictations. Just saying. I mean, you know, it's, I think that if like the, if they mandate certain equipment, the, uh, to be installed on a vehicle or on an engine, then I think that they should uh, maybe take some responsibility for when it doesn't work. Because as far as I've noticed, it seems only the end user has to be responsible for these things. I mean, the manufacturers are responsible for them too once they're under warranty. But after that, you're on your own, which is kind of not okay. Regardless, got all the bolts in, tighten them down. It's the wrong size socket, isn't it? Yeah, that's a 14. What was that? Oh, flashlight. Scared the bejesus out. And that'll probably conclude my rant today. Tight. Tight. Definitely tighter than it was. Very good. VLOM installed. Let's get that connector way back there reconnected. That's an easy one to forget. If the thing falls down, it's hard to see. Yeah, I think we're good there. Well guys, it is, uh, it's becoming later in the day and I still do not have the appropriate parts uh, here to, um, to actually get this intake back on because I don't have my, uh, my switch. Uh, they said they had it in stock, and then we called them, they said it wasn't in stock. So they had to drive far away to Tampa to go pick it up. So uh, same thing with the exhaust down there, I don't have that piece either. So I, unfortunately, I wanted to run this through and make it a super long video, but since I do not have components and it is the end of day, shadows are long, I'm getting tired, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just close this video out right now since I, I have no more work to do on it at this current juncture. But fear not, the next video that comes out will be the finalized part two of this particular GMC Sierra 5.3. We'll get all that stuff buttoned back up. We'll cut those converters off, check out the carnage inside uh, tomorrow morning, 
and then uh, we will uh, get the new one installed as soon as possible. So having said all that, as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you in fact did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video, in a Sierra, in a VLOM, in a converter, in a part one. In a transmission. <laughs>